Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are gonna be doing a preview for our upcoming sew along. Yes, <laughs> time to start back sewing. Um, thank you all so much for your patience while I've been away, just kind of taking a break and resting. Um, but I definitely miss y'all, I miss sewing, I miss uploading. So it's time to start back and get back on our schedule and routine, all right? <laughs> So today pattern that we're gonna be previewing is McCall 7975. It's a cute and simple little Mrs. Top. I figured we'll start off easy and then maybe work into some skirts and some jackets for fall. Um, but this pattern, I thought it was super cute with this little twist detail on the front. And I'm probably gonna go with view B or view D on this pattern. So let's go ahead and get into the preview. So here again is the pattern that we will be sewing. This is McCall 7975. And you can see that I have purchased this pattern in the large, extra large, and extra, extra large pattern size. So let's go ahead and flip onto the back and read the details about it. So the description of this pattern is a Mrs. Top. It is close fitting tops so view A, B, C, and D in two lengths, forms a drape knot through front opening, have neck band, sleeve, and hem length variations. View A is the short sleeve, view B is the three quarter length sleeve, view C is the sleeve with the flounce, and view D is the long sleeve. You can also see that this pattern is listed as easy and they have also included a stretch guide. So this is the guide that you would use to test and make sure the fabric that you are using has enough stretch that it stretches over to here. That way you will know if it is a great knit to use to make this top. The suggested fabrics for this top are moderate stretch knits that have a 30% stretch cross grain. So those include cotton knits, jerseys, interlock and rib knits. You wouldn't want to use a knit that has too much stretch, just like a slinky knit, that would be too much. And you also don't want to use one that doesn't have enough stretch. So definitely make sure that you are getting a knit that has at least 30% cross grain stretch. And again, use this guide up here at the top to help you with that. For the size that I will be cutting based off of these finished garment measurements, and this is what the top will measure once we are done making it. So this is the finished garment measurements. So the measurements around my bust line, I'm gonna cut the large, which is gonna give me a 42 and a half. So that is the size I'm gonna be cutting. Now let's go over the tools and the fabric that I have purchased to make this top. For fabric, I will be using this leopard print knit that I found at my local Hobby Lobby. So this right here is the fabric that I'm gonna be using. I also have some clear elastic here. Now this is not a notion, uh, but this is just something that I will be using. I already had it in my stash and I am just gonna use it to stabilize the shoulder seams on this top. So as I'm wearing and caring for the garment over time, my shoulder seams, they won't stretch out. They'll be nice and stabilized with this clear elastic. If you don't have clear elastic and you want to stabilize your shoulder seam, you can use twill tape, um, hem tape, clear elastic, you can even use interfacing if you have it. But this is what I will be using to help stabilize my shoulder seams for this top. Other things that you will need are just our everyday sewing tools. So grab your ruler just in case. I don't think we will need it for this project, but it's always good to have these things close by. So I have my ruler, I have some scissors. This is the rotary cutter that I use for fabric. This is my rotary, rotary cutter that I use for paper patterns. Have my seam gauge here my seam ripper, marking tools, little snippers here, point turner, which again, I don't think I will need it for this project, but you never know. Measuring tape, just to make sure I'm taking accurate measurements, pattern weights for cutting out the pattern, the fabric, pins, sewing machine thread, and serger thread. So now let's go ahead and open up the pattern and go through the instructions together. All right, so I am gonna be sewing view B on this pattern. So those are the directions that I will follow along with. Before I start though, I do want to show you the glossary that they have right here on the pattern. So if you are unfamiliar with any of the bold terms that they have here, definitely make sure that you check out the glossary because that's where the definition of those terms will be at. And those will help you understand what you should be doing as you're constructing your garment. So let's go ahead and start right here with step one for the front and back. We're going to reinforce the lower curved edges of the front pattern piece number one through the large circles and then clip to the large circles. So right here you see they have large circles, they've reinforced them and then they've clipped to them. Then we're gonna fold those in and make a narrow hem. 
At step three, we're going to reinforce inner edges of front along solid lines and then slash along solid line to triangle as shown. So right off the back, <laughs> you already know you have to transfer all these markings. So that's step three. At step four, we're going to stitch a quarter of an inch from the lower front edges of flounce, continuing along invert corners using long machine stitches. Okay, so we're going to be basting and then we're going to turn up 5 eighths of an inch hem at the lower front edges and invert corners of front, turning in a quarter of an inch of raw edge, pull threads to ease fullness, stitch and press. Okay, so along that curve that we created right here, we're just going to create a narrow hem. At step five, we're going to pin right sides of front, right sides together, matching notches and large circles, stitch from front side edge to large circle, press seam allowance open. At step six, we are going to form the front knot. On the outside, we're gonna lap the left side of front over right side of front, slipping lower in through opening as shown. Okay, so after we have sewn this opening, we're gonna slip that through the opening here. Got it. <laughs> right here at step seven, with right sides together, we're gonna to bring the notch edges of left front together, encasing right front at waist, pin and base remaining raw edges together, stitch from left side edge to large circle, through all thicknesses, press seam allowance open. Here at step eight, we're going to stitch the back, pattern piece number two, to the front at shoulders using a double stitch seam, press seam allowance toward the back. At step nine, we're going to finish the lower edge of back with a 5 8 of an inch narrow hem, easing where necessary. And then we're going to stitch the front and back at sides using a double stitch seam, press seam allowance toward the back. And then at step 11, we're gonna turn in the lower end of the seam allowance diagonally and slip stitch that closed. Moving on to the neck band at step 12, we're gonna stay stitch the neck edge of the top. Then we're going to stitch the center back seam of the neck band with right sides together. Step 14, we're going to fold the band with wrong sides together and then press it and pin it together, pin it and stitch it onto the neck edge. And then step 16 gives you an option to edge stitch the neck band if you like. At step 17, we begin to work on the sleeves. So we're gonna double stitch the sleeve seam together, making sure there's right sides facing. Okay, step 18 is for view A sleeve. I'm gonna be doing view B sleeve. So after we have it stitched up here at step 17, for view B and D, we're gonna to move to step 19 and we're just gonna do a narrow hem on the end of the sleeve and then Step 20 is for view C, 21 is as well, 22 and 23. 24 is for all views and we're just gonna install the sleeve and then do a double stitch seam and then press the seam allowances flat, turn seam allowances toward the sleeve. And that is all for this top. While I was reading this, if you felt like you was a little confused and lost, then fear not. Definitely make sure that you come back for the tutorial. I'm sure when we're actually sewing and we have the pieces cut out and we're working with them, then it'll make a lot more sense then. Um, but if I confuse you, I do apologize, but definitely make sure that you come back and we'll sew this all together. Well, that is all for the preview of this pattern. I really do hope that you all enjoyed it. I cannot wait to sew this up, so be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Turn on your notifications so you will know when I upload the sew along. Until next time, blessings everyone. Bye.